welcome back to my course industrial biotechnology now in the last uh, lecture i discussed about the enzymatic reaction kinetics and uh, basically i told you that enzymes they are very as uh, they are very specific as per uh, substrate is concerned because uh, uh, i told you that uh, as per example glucose isomerase can act on glucose and produce the fructose it cannot act other than glucose so they are very specific uh, protease acts on protein molecule to degrade the protein lipase acts on uh, lipid uh, to degrade the lipid molecule so they are very specific as per substrate and and this uh, kinetics of the uh, enzyme degradation that is explained with the help of michaelis menten equation and then uh, we discuss different uh, inhibition kinetics we have competitive inhibition we have non competitive inhibition we have uncompetitive inhibition and uh, and now in this lecture we want to go little bit ahead because when we, we want to carry out any kind of enzymatic uh, reaction uh, in kind can kind of reactor and how you to produce some kind of product how we can uh, analyze the system so this i am i am going to discuss here now first i want to tell uh, the, i told you that you know that I, as per as the processes are concerned there are two type of process we have one is batch process and another is continuous process now if you look at uh, this uh, enzymatic uh, uh, the batch process particularly batch process is considered is a uh, is a unsteady state operation why it is unsteady state if you if you look at the substrate concentration with respect to time it did keep on decreasing with respect to time as the uh, we know the rate of substrate degradation this is is uh, proportional to the substrate concentration am i right now if if the substrate concentration keep on changing naturally rate of reaction is changes so it is a example of the unsteady state operations now uh, this is uh, now i told you when you do any kind of reactor analysis we use a formula what is this formula rate of input equal to rate of output plus equal plus rate of consumption plus rate of accumulation now here in case of suppose this is a this is the batch process there is no input there is no output so we can write this is equal to 0 and this is equal to 0 and what is the consumption rate of reaction into v because rate of reaction is dv ds by dt ds is the concentration mass per unit volume if you multiplied by volume then you will get the total how what is the rate of change of the substrate molecule that is that is there and this is the accumulation is into v into uh, dt this is called accumulation so um, this is how we we explain here ds by dt is the consider minus v this is because why is minus because substrate concentration keep on de decreasing with respect to time so it is since is decreasing this minus sign has come but at the same time when you when you when you when you have product formation then this will be if you write dp by dt this all be always will be positive because the but uh, when we when we talk about the ds by dt this will be negative because this is the decreasing profile this is the increasing profile that we have now <coughs> now we here you see that uh, that you know that how we analyze the system that uh, we we can we can we can have this uh, here this uh, so, so what we what, what we can write the here the minus uh, uh, minus rs into v equal to uh, dsv by dt am i right and now here that uh, uh, we uh, that you know if you look at here that the uh, so your v equal to v max s Km plus s. Am I right? Now, um, what we can do? This is uh, this is equal to this is the minus ds by dt. Now I can bring it here uh, that you know we can exchange like this, and if we exchange, then we'll we'll come across the. We can we can we can come this kind of equations that you know Km 
this uh, k m plus s by s into d s. So, uh, this equation will come. Will uh, then if you if you if you analyze this, this will be k m into d s by d t. Uh, this is s and this is like this. And then d s uh, this is d s by s. D s by s is what? D s by d l n s. Am I right? Now, if you integrate s 0 to s, then what will happen l n s by s 0. This is how it is coming here s by s 0 and d s equal to s my s, s, my s minus s 0, because this is uh, uh, then, then this is minus this is uh, v my the, the 0 to t b d b is the batch per time and then if we analyze then we can kind the time of the batch reaction can be expressed by this equation. So, this is very simple we can monitor that that uh, you suppose uh, from this equation we can find out suppose we want to find out the 50 percent time required for 50 percent substrate conversion how you can find out. So, you, you write this s equal to 0 0.5 into s 0 this is 0.5 into s 0. So, if you know s 0 value you can find out that what is the time required for the batch fermentation process you can easily calculate. Now, the one uh, drawback of the batch process is that you know after the batch uh, is uh, completed then you have to restart the second batch and uh, for that what you have to do there is a there is a there is a important uh, that things that will come in the picture called downtime. So, suppose this is the batch am I right this is the batch and uh, this is the fermenter and you, you you carry out the fermentation after the fermentation is over you have to take out the material again you have to clean the vessel and refill the substrate here am i right for that you require some time and this time we consider as the downtime so whenever we we talk about any kind of batch fermentation process we shall have to consider the total batch time total time is the total batch time reaction time is the time required for the uh, reaction to carry out in the batch process plus downtime. So, this downtime we have to consider in case of in case of batch fermentation process this we shall have to remember. Now, I shall I at the end I shall solve some kind of numerical problem when you when you solve the numerical your idea on this pro that particular things will be clear. Now, let us see how we can operate the continuous process because in the enzymatic reaction how you operate in a continuous process. The problem is that that you know that you know we have well star reactor this is like this this is the reactor that we have we can uh, this is uh, this is here we, there is a continuous inflow and continuous outflow of the reactor and uh, what is the purpose of the hesitator make the homogeneity of the reaction mixture. So, what I want to point out here suppose whatever substrate concentration is there the same con substrate concentration because since the concentrate that you know this is the homogeneity in the reaction mixture the concentration should be same. The, uh, the only the problem with that in case of freely suspended enzyme when there is a flow the enzyme present in the reactor that also leaking from the system that will go out with the liquid. So, if we do not add any kind of enzyme then what will happen a time will come when there is no enzyme present in the reactor. So, your total reaction will be stopped though this is this kind of problem that we have during the when we when we talk about the suspended enzymes uh, rea enzymatic reaction by using suspended enzyme. Now, uh, then let us see how we can analyze this system. Now, actual uh, that you know dilution rate I have uh, I uh, already we might be knowing that uh, dilution rate is what the flow rate this is volumetric flow rate by volume. What is the volumetric flow rate volume per unit time am I right the and what is the this is volume. So, what is happening this volume volume will cancel. So, what will be the unit 1 by time the dilution rate what is the, the unit of dilution rate is the time inverse, but hydraulic retention time what do you mean by hydraulic retention time that uh, this is 1 by d 1 by d equal to time. That means, suppose you are passing the liquid through the reactor the question is that how long this liquid resides in the reactor that is the call hydraulic retention time. So, this is uh, how you can calculate here now here also we have uh, the material balance like input 
plus generation equal to output consumption and accumulation. Now, here the substrate balance we have under steady state condition that f into s 0 is the input that we have this is f this is s 0 and there is no generation because substrate is always consumed then output is the f into s this is f into s then consumption is minus r s and s. Now, if you consider the steady state I told you that what is steady state when the concentration is remain unchanged with respect to time. Then, then when you, how it is achieved when the rate of accumulation of the substrate is 0. If your accumulation substrate is there then it is not possible to attain the steady state condition. So, your accumulation this should be equal to 0. So, if you if you if we analyze this process is coming like this f into s 0 f v v is the velocity and capital V is the volume of the reactor and the final equation will be d into s 0 v max s by k m plus s and this equation can be used to calculate the dilution and required to achieve a particular level of substrate conversion. Suppose, we want to achieve the 50 percent substrate conversion, 80 percent substrate conversion that uh, that uh, this equation we can we can use uh, that you know that uh, how we can achieve that uh, particular conversion and how much time is required that, uh, that also we can calculate from that. How we can how we can calculate the time I can tell you that uh, that also we can I have already mentioned what is the T equal to T equal to uh, B by f am I right v by f equal to 1 by d. So, if you if you if you so this is the 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 volume of the reactor this is the particular uh, volumetric flow rate and if you find out the time of the reaction from this particular process then we can easily find out the volume of the reactor. Now, in case of plug flow reactor that uh, 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 that you know and what is what do you mean by plug flow reactor that uh, it is like this this is the uh, this is uh, the liquid is flowing like this through a particular tube tubular is the kind of tubular type of reactor. So, it it flow like this. Now, plug flow means that you know that it it that you know uh, in, in a true sense ideal plug flow there should not be any kind of velocity gradient across the across the cross section of the tube this is called in case of ideal plug flow now it it goes like this that one and two others now if you look at suppose this is the s0 and this is s the s0 with respect to distance sorry this keep on decreasing with respect to time so, that means, your substrate concentration and different parts of the reactor that will be different. So, at different uh, distance you have different rate of reaction. It is something similar to the batch process. What is the what is the batch process? Batch process is uh, substrate with respect to time it is decreasing like this and here in case of plug flow reactor this substrate concentration that decreasing with respect to distance. But here one thing is that that there is no axial mixing. Axial mixing means when it uh, goes like this there should not be axial this uh, this side axial mixing. There might be the radial mixing. Radial mixing is permissible, but axial mixing is not possible. Axial mixing actually take place in case of CSTR the composition varies along with the flow path that I have already explained. Now, this is this is kind of example that we have suppose this is I told you this is f into s 0 and this is m into s. Now, to analyze the system we, we initially considered a differential fragments. This is a differential fragments whose, whose thickness is del z and so, uh, this is the, if you know the cross sectional area A and del Z this will be equal to volume of the del V. Del V means volume of this particular differential section. Now, if you want to do the mass balance across this particular differential section again our equation is same input equal to output plus consumption accumulation. What is the input? F 
L O S into Z. This is the Z step action, and whatever change is there, I can write Z plus del Z, and then this minus R S into this volume because that we that we can we can express like this. Now here, here you look, look, here you see that this is uh, this is F into S S Z plus the del Z plus S, and this is the volume A into del Z. Now uh, here, uh, here what is happening? This is a flow rate. Flow rate is what volume per unit time. Am I right? And this is what uh, this is the, this is what this is the volume. Now. Uh, this is a is the area. Now, if you divide by area, then volume divided by area will be then this will be velocity. This is called velocity. This is u is the velocity, and the del z is the thickness of this particular uh, strip. And this uh, this we can analyze and we can have this equation. Now finally, we have we will come across this equation. This is the one by u equal to del z. This is the strip that uh, because this is uh, what we are planning to do. We have analyzing across this strip. This is equal to del z. So uh, if we know the del z and we can integrate zero to l, this is uh, this is whole whole length. Then we can have we can we can we can, we can take care whole volume of the reactor. So this is how we can do this. That uh, this is equal to l. And this uh, whole strip is there. now. If you look at this, uh, this equation that uh, this is uh, uh, that uh, u. If you if you u by l, u is the u is the velocity, l is the length. Then this is uh, this is this will be equal to u, uh, uh, the time inverse. Am I right? And uh, to l by l by u is the time. So tau plug flow reactor. Tau plug flow reactor means space time in the plug flow reactor. How long the liquid remains in the reactor to convert S0 into S that can be explained like this. Now, if you look at this expression and the batch expression, that is, we will find almost that is same. So, we can write the space time of the plug flow reactor is same as the time required for the batch process because T batch equal to T plot, uh, tau plug flow reactor. Now, this is the problem I told you at the beginning that we want to solve a numerical problem and if we if we understand the problem correctly, then I hope that you know the conception of this uh, reactor analysis will be very much clear to you. Then try to understand. Now, what is this problem? Problem is that glucose is to be converted to fructose by using the glucose isomerase enzyme. So, you know that you have a reactor like this. You have a reactor like this. So here we are, uh, we are, uh, we are bringing the glucose. And what enzyme we are giving here? This is uh, glucose isomerase. Glucose isomerase enzyme we are giving. This is the reaction that this is the hesitated reaction takes place. The initial glucose concentration is 200. So S0 is 200 grams per liter. Am I right? The degree of conversion is 60 percent. So we want to produce 60 percent conversion of the of the substrate. So what you have to re re do that we want to produce 10 kg of fructose per day from glucose by using glucose isomerase. So what uh, the what should be the volume of the reactor in the batch process? CSTR and plug flow reactor. And uh, the kinetic constants are given. V max is this much and uh, Km value is this much. The yield, uh, yield coefficient means that is the uh, y p by s is the yield coefficient means uh, gram of product formation per gram of substrate consumed. This is 1. That means 1 gram of glucose gives 1 gram of fructose and downtime is considered as the 4 hours and activity of the biocatalyst can be assumed to be constant in time. So, this is the couple of assumptions we have made. Let us see how we can solve it. Now, this is a stoichiometry we have the glucose, one mole of glucose in presence of enzyme produces one mole of fructose. Now, uh, these are different parameters are given. Now, we have already seen the T batch. What is the T batch? T batch equal to 
minus uh, the, the tau s 0 by s d s by minus r s. What is minus r s? r is the velocity of reaction. What is the velocity of reaction? V max by s k m plus s. Am I right? And this is the this is the, this is the we have by integration we have already found out this expression that uh, T batch equal to 1 by V max uh, k minus k m ln 1 minus x s minus x s into s 0. This we can easily find out. And x s what is x s is the fraction of substrate that is converted x s equal to s 0 minus s by s 0. So, here 60 percent converted. So, uh, that means what a what a what will be this is 0 0.6 am I right. So, this is 0 0.6 that we have that we, we can put it here then we can find out how much time is required for the batch process we can easily calculate that. Now, here again I told you that uh, one of the drawback of the batch process is the downtime because you know when you when you run the batch you have one after 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 the completion of one batch you have to run another batch. So, naturally that uh, that you require some time because you have to take the material out and you have to clean the vessel again refill the vessel. So, for that you require some time then that we consider as a downtime. So, that downtime we have to consider. So, here we have already find out that uh, suppose we find out this is 2.307 hours and but you know you have downtime is 4 hours. So, total time of the batch process is coming how much? 6.307 hours am I right. Now, when you when you operate any kind of when you, suppose we want to find out the what is the volume of the batch reactor. So, what you have to do? We have to find out that how many batch you have to operate per day to get the desired amount of product. Now, so, so this is the, this is the, uh, the one batch uh, is required 6.307 hours. The one day is uh, 24 hours am I right. The number of batch per day we can operate how much 3.80. This is the, uh, the number of batches we can operate. So, now, if you look at the problem that uh, our basis was 10 kg of fructose we want to produce per, per day am I right. So, that means 10 kg per batch how much we can produce 10 divided by 3.8 that is 2.863 kg this is per batch we can we shall have to produce am I right. And then <coughs> Then we know that uh, that you know that uh, our yield of substrate is the 1 kg of product yield of product is 1 kg of product can produce from 1 kg of substrate. So, how much substrate is required then the, since it is uh, 2.63 kg of product then our substrate also required 2.63 kg of substrate. Now, now here we have 60 percent conversion of the substrate. So, we can we can divide by 0 0.6360 60, then we find out this is the actual amount of substrate required for this fermentation process. Now, but then question comes what will be the volume of the reactor? The actual amount of substrate required actual amount of substrate required is how much 4.38 kg and what is the initial concentration of substrate 200 kg per cubic meter. So, our volume is coming 0 0.022 cubic meter. This is equal to uh, 22 liters. We know 1 cubic meter is equal to 1000 liters. Am I right? Just you multiply that 1000, you will get the 22 liters. So, so what I want to stress here is uh, is very simple. It will be easy to calculate uh, that you know volume of the reactor. The uh, what we can we can we can what we can do that. Uh, Uh, first again I am repeating it again that if you look at the batch process the uh, first we do what you can find out we shall have to find out the time of the batch process. Once your time of the batch process is done then you, ha you have to you have to find out that total uh, total uh, time total time required for the batch process that uh, the batch process plus downtime and when you have the uh, the total time then you find out number of batches per day 
then once you know the number of batches then you find out that how much product you have to produce per batch that is 2.63 and you know when you have the stoichiometry that uh, they, they for getting this much of product how much substrate is required then you can easily find out how much substrate is required and since you want to have 60 percent conversion so you can easily calculate how much product is required uh, how much substrate is required for this process once you know that how much substrate is required then initial substrate concentration you divide you will get the volume of the reactor so you can easily calculate that now let, let us come back to uh, come to the uh, CSTR CSTR process now in the CSTR what we have we have like this we have a continuous inflow and outflow and our expression that we have already developed that is tau CSTR because the uh, tau CSTR is equal to is equal to H0 minus S by minus RS. This is the this is the this is the this is how we can uh, we, we can we can write. Now uh, this uh, this uh, this can be simplified in this form. If you, the RS is the velocity of reaction, you put this value, you will get this equation, and then you put this value man, that. Uh, you can remember I, I can I can little bit elaborate here in from the material analysis you see I have what I have shown you can if you if this is equal to V equal to minus ds by dt into V am I right this VB will cancel so it will be what we will be having the dt dt equal to I can I can write like this I can write dt equal to I can write ds by minus rs you know? and this this is only s0 minus s minus rs so this how this has come you know that there should not be any confused how it has come so this is how it has come then uh, we know that uh, velocity of reaction equal to minus rs this is equal to vmax s km plus s so you can you can put this value in this equation and we can we can find this and, uh, and uh, the expression and you put the values with 60 percent conversion of the substrate and here time is coming around 2.63 hours. Now here in a con advantage of the continuous process is that there is no downtime. No downtime is required in the continuous process because you continuously you can operate. Now let us see how we can find out that, uh, that volume of the reactor. how you can find out the volume of the reactor now uh, volume of the reactor i can i can i can write like this what you can write tau cstr equal to volume of the cstr by f f is the volumetric flow rate so it is like this that you know tau cstr is equal to volume of the reactor divided by volume volumetric flow rate this is volumetric flow rate the volume volume will cancel so this will be time Am I right? So here, this is the this. Is, so what you have to, what you have to find out that what is the flow rate? Now here, how much how much product you want to produce? 10 kg of product you can produce. For 10 kg of product, how much substrate is required? 10 kg. But what is the what is the percentage of substrate conversion? Is 60 percent. The 10 divided by 0 0.6. That is, this is the actual amount of substrate that is required. So if you then you can convert it. This is in hour. So you can if you, this is per day. So you divide by 24. Then you will get the the 0.7 kg of substrate you require per hour. Am I right? So now now this is the what is the actual amount of substrate 0.7, uh, and this is the what is the initial concentration is 200 uh, by, by, uh, cubic meter per hour. So if you if you if you do that, then what will happen? That uh, we can we, we can easily easily find out what is the volume required for this. You know that uh, this is the concentration kg per cubic meter. This is 200 kg per cubic meter, and this kg kg will cancel. The cubic meter will go up. So it is meter uh, cubic meter per hour. So this is coming like this. Now now with that the volume of CSTR equal to F into tau CSTR. So 3.6 into this, uh, 
So this volume is coming around 8.26 liter. So this is this you can you can do it very again. I am telling you how you how we have done. Initially we consider 10 kg of fructose per day, and uh, and we take the yield coefficient that you know from the stoichiometry we can easily find out that uh, for producing this much of product how much substrate is required. Then we find the from the stoichiometry 10 kg product formation 10 kg substrate required. But your your conversion efficiency is 60 percent. You divide by 60, you find out the exact amount of substrate that is required. <coughs> then per day, then you will find out that you know per hour how much substrate is required. The volumetric flow rate you have to calculate for this equation, and that can be determined by this that actual substrate requirement that is the 0.7 kg per hour and this is initial substrate concentration is 200 kg per cubic meter. So, you can find out the volumetric flow rate. Now, you did multiply it with your tau CSTR, you will get the volume of the reactor. So, it is it is very simple. I hope you can do it. Now, let us let us come to the uh, plug flow reactor. In case of plug flow reactor, your calculation is similar to as per your batch process is concerned. This equation we have seen the expression that we have for the T batch and tau plug flow reactor is same. So here we can we can we can put the same value 60 percent of conversion and you can easily find out this and this value is same. If you if you this is equal to T batch. If you if you if you if you, if you look at the initial part, then you will find that it is the same. But now this tau when you consider the uh, tau's tau uh, plug flow reactor. Now here also what we have this is volume by uh, flow rate. Am I right? This flow rate you have to find out. Now we have already shown you how you can calculate the flow rate in the previous problem. Same flow rate you can put it here. Then <coughs> then you will get the volume of the reactor. Same flow rate you can find the same value that uh, what we have. Uh, we have calculated in case of CSTR. If you do that, you multiply it by that, you will get the this is the, this is the volume of the reactor in case of plug flow reactor. Now, if you compare here, here if you if you compare this uh, value that uh, that uh, in case of batch process. How much volume is required? 22 liter. In case of CSTR, is 8.26 liter. In case of plug flow reactor, is 8.07 liter. So, so as per as per reactor design is concerned, when you go for any kind of uh, if anybody asks you which reactor will be suitable for carry out this process, answer should be the plug flow reactor. Now, now here I want to stress one point that you know that in the industry it is obviously the plug flow reactor is uh, always uh, good as uh, uh, for uh, for getting uh, your product formation but but i told you that operation of the plug flow reactor is a problem because but there should not be any kind of axial mixing there should be radial mixing but there should not, this is very difficult to achieve so but you know most easiest way for operating the plant is the cstr now question comes how this plug flow reactor can be replaced by CSTR. So, if you if you look at uh, the, the so what we have done that this is uh, plug flow reactor. So, this is equal to D s by minus R s am I right? So, this is we have. So, the, now if you plot this uh, minus 1 by R s versus um, s if we plot it like this and it is like this then here this is S0 to S, the area under this curve, this is we consider is tau plug flow reactor, tau plug flow reactor, huh? am I right? So, now since it is very difficult to operate, now if you if you have multiple CSTR, this is like this, then uh, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, like this. So, you have like this number of CSTR in series, this is like this and uh, this is like this. So, so, you know if you if they are connected with each other and to do this is there is a possibility that you know that uh, your plug flow reactor can be easily replaced by the uh, multiple CSTRs. This is your operation will be easier. So, so that is why in the industry we usually prefer 
the CSTR, we don't hear, uh, prefer the plaque flow reactor. Thank you very much.